Overcoming fear. Today we're going to be talking about the idea of overcoming crippling fear. On the Prayer Podcast, this is episode 7. You're listening to Pastor Dave. It's day 7 of our week of prayer and fasting. Can you believe it? Depending on when you started. Now, if you are still going the rest of today, if you're wrapping up tomorrow, I want to encourage you to finish strong. And if you have been on and off or just jumping back in today or you just realized that we were doing this and you want to jump in, it's okay because it's never too late to make more room in our lives for God. Today, this podcast is going to speak to somebody at their core because we all have fears. Odds are you have a crippling fear in your life. There's a giant in your path, an obstacle, something that has been defying you like the giant Goliath. In uh, 2017, I suffered a severe panic attack that left me unable to fly on airplanes for five years. What you need to know is that I had been flying all my life on airplanes, and it's something that I'm deeply passionate about. I love traveling and going to new places. So to be in a situation where I couldn't even think of heights or airplanes or things like bridges uh, because I was so overwhelmed with, with terror and and anguish that was a difficult position to be in fast forward a couple weeks ago i was finally able to take a commercial plane to see my family in another state i was finally able to fly again now how i got there that's the part of the journey that i want to share with you today and to do that i want to open up to hebrews 10 23 which says this let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm For God can be trusted to keep his promise. This has been our foundational scripture during this week of prayer and fasting. So how does a person overcome these types of fears? Well, I can only share my experience, and that is that there was a lot of prayer involved. My wife was a huge support system. I spoke to many uh, prayer mentors, and I shared my, my need, my prayer request, with people from my small groups. You might have heard me talk about it from time to time. And all the while, I was also talking to a therapist, doing everything that I could to manage this from a human level, right? But from a spiritual point of view, it was also an interesting experience. And it all culminated in this this idea of grace and this article that I found online at a very opportune moment because it just helped me so much. And I hope that it will bless you. The article is called, You'll Get It When You Need It. It's from a website called Know the Truth, Pastor Philip DeCourcy. And it opens up with a scripture, Hebrews 4.16, and this is what it says. It says, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. And that's the part that really struck me, that last part. When we need it most. This is the rest of the article. Corey Ten Boon was a Dutch Christian who, along with her father and sister, courageously hid Jews in her home during the Second World War. Her family was betrayed and handed over to the Germans, and they were sent to the notorious Ravensbrück concentration camp. During her time there, Corey lost both her father and sister. In spite of her loss, however, she did not lose her grip on God. When she finally was released from the camp due to a clerical error, she would reflect on the fact that God had given her the strength to endure and supplied his sufficient grace as she needed it. In fact, Corey had learned to trust God in the midst of death early on in life. When she was a young girl, she witnessed the death of a baby and was confronted with the fragile nature of life. Spooked by this experience, she burst into tears and sobbed to her father, I need you. You can't die. You can't. Seeking to comfort and counsel his frightened daughter, Corey's father sat down beside her and gently said, Corey, When you and I go to Amsterdam, when do I give you the ticket? She sniffled a little and replied, Why, just before we get on the train. Exactly, her father responded. And our wise father in heaven knows when we are going to need things too. Don't run ahead of him, Corey. When the time comes and some of us will have to die, you will look into your heart and find the strength you need just in time. Corey Ten Boom learned something that day that would hold true throughout her life. God doesn't give us grace for the future. Grace cannot be stored. It must be used for the moment we are in and nothing more. Grace is like the manna that God supplied the Israelites in the wilderness. It has an expiration date on it. Its shelf life is one day. 
Exodus 16.21. Grace is for right now, according to 2 Corinthians 12.9. In Hebrews 4.16, we are encouraged to come boldly to the throne of our gracious God to receive mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. A more literal translation of that last phrase would be, grace for a well-timed help. There is grace for what we need, when we need it. Now that is beautiful. Grace not sooner, not later. Grace no more, no less. Grace perfectly timed and perfectly tailored. Like Corey Ten Boom, it is easy for us to let our minds run ahead of us, causing a stampede of fear. It is natural for us to wonder about tomorrow. But God has promised strength for each day, according to Deuteronomy 33.25. There is no grace for tomorrow until tomorrow. One of the secrets to successful living is living each day in the moment of God's sufficient and surprising grace. Timing is everything, even when it comes to God's grace. End of article. Today I want to remind you that God loves you and that God wants to empower you to overcome every fear and he wants to offer you grace for today. This was a profound truth that impacted me in a very real way as I was getting ready to go on the plane. After five years of not being able to fly, I kept on reading this scripture over and over again. I needed strength and I needed supernatural courage that I didn't have. And I decided to trust God and step out in faith. And it wasn't easy. And uh, truthfully, I was afraid every step of the way. But I felt this incredible courage come upon me even as I was afraid because I knew that God was with me. I pray that some of you today can identify with what I'm saying and realize that God wants to offer you that same courage to face your fear, whatever it may be. So as we close this week of prayer and fasting, let me pray for you and let's invite God to enter these moments where we find ourselves facing giants that seem overwhelming. Let us pray. God, we thank you for an awesome week of prayer and fasting, of connection, of community, fellowship, of believing for your promises. It is your promises that we want to receive, but God, it is you that we're after. We want to be more like you. I pray, God, that today you would encourage us as we face every giant that stands in our way. God, we believe in miracles. We believe that every obstacle, whether it's a sickness, whether it's an emotional challenge, whether it's a mental health need, whatever it may be, you're able to meet it and you're able to overcome. And because of you, we are able to overcome. I pray for victory for every person that is listening to me right now and those that are praying in their homes, those that are praying at the church, those that are praying in their small groups, Victory for us as a church family. God, we thank you for being a deeply generous God. We can't wait to see what you're going to do. When we look back at what you've already done, our hearts are full of gratitude. We love you, God. And it is in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure being with you each and every morning, praying together. We'll see you again next time. Bye bye. Sound calls the midnight tomorrow. The melody.